All right, so I'm going to take those um, two sets of objects, the original uh, quads and the triangles, and I'll bake these by right-clicking on the canvas so that we can see what we get. I'll turn the ISO curve uh, previews off. Now we can see our kind of conditionally triangulated set of quad panels, right? Good stuff. Are there any questions thus far before we move on to the next type of custom panel? Okay, well the next step is now that we've um, uh, we've got this option for determining uh, which two types of uh, quads we want to isolate. Um, we can save this and save it as uh, the next file, which is option B. Let's go back to just the two types of quads, group A and group B. And instead of triangulating, let's say that what we want is this condition to drive what type of custom panel you might want to apply to uh, those quad locations. So if you turn on the layer 1-5, in top view you'll see that there are some versions of simple surfaces that have been created here um, that we can choose to apply to those, um, to those quads. So first what we'll do is um, we'll create one version of this together and we'll use that as what's going to get applied to group A. And then we'll use one of these other ones that we already have uh, to apply to group B. All right, so um, what I'm going to do is maximize Rhino so we can just work in top view. Okay, and I'm going to take these edge curves right here that are just uh, an exploded rectangle. I'm going to copy them over. All right, and uh, the idea here is that we want to create a panel. It's a little more clear if I go to render view. We want to create a panel that has uh, a hole in it, right? So in this case, if we use this panel, the holes will be located at the vertices of all of our panels. Or if we use this panel, it will be both at the, the corners and at the middle. All right, so the idea here is that this is our component and this is going to be distributed onto our collection of quads. And at first we might do all of them the same. And then we can say, okay, well, based on this condition, we want type A to go here and type B to go onto the panels that are here. All right. So first things first, um, we just want to create a simple base surface. Uh, so we're going to um, loft between these two edges. Right? Now here's my kind of the base panel, right? And I can do anything that I want to it. So I could trim out the corners with some circles. I could do something in the middle. Let's say that maybe what I do is I'm going to draw uh, a rectangle interior to this surface, something like this, right? And then with that rectangle, I'll trim out the inner part. All right? So now I have what's a kind of simple representation of my panel. I'm going to take this, all this geometry, and I'm going to copy it down. All right? And um, I'm going to untrim using that command in the Rhino uh, command line, this inner edge, and maybe what I'll do is I'll scale up the trim profile so I have a different inner trim. So I'll trim that up away from the surface. Alright, so here's type A and here's type B. Alright, so we're going to use group A to uh, receive this panel and group B to receive this panel. 
Now, in this case, the, uh, the size of our panel doesn't matter. It's going to be relative this panel to that panel, so our trim profiles will be smaller. Um, but we do want to keep things consistent in terms of lofting from here to here, so we don't end up with those trim surfaces to start. All right, so here's our two types of panels. And now what we're going to do is we're going to apply one custom panel to this group and another custom panel to this group. So the way to do that is that we're going to bring in those two surfaces from Rhino using the params uh, surface container. So this is going to be, uh, I need two of these, this is going to be custom panel A and custom panel B. I'm going to right click and I'm going to set one surface here, set another surface here, choosing A and B. And now all we need to do is apply the trim from this one to the targets, right? So under a Surface Utilities, there's an object called Copy Trim. And this allows us to copy UV trim data from one surface to another. So here's my source surface, and here's my target surface. So now all of those objects that were identified as group uh, A or panel type A now have that same trim data. So our panels are trimmed out. So basically the flat ones right now are all... Um, are all being trimmed in the corner. We do the same thing uh, with the copy trim to the other set. Here's my target, here's my source. Now the ones that are more curvy are now going to have a bigger aperture. Right? And again, this is still all related back to the underlying surface, right? The variation of our panels coming from a conditional test, as well as the implied shape of, um, of the surface underlay. So if I move this vertical, right, the panels change. Right? And which ones receive uh, which type of, um, of copy trim is also going to update. So here we have all of our copy trim objects. And of course, I can change the condition. So my Rhino geeked out for a second there, so I'll undo, I'll redo this part, which was I untrimmed this edge, right? Then I scaled this up, and then retrimmed it, and specified this as custom panel B. So as I move my slider, my collection of panels that are receiving type B, of course, is changing. Okay, so uh, one of the questions that came through was, um, it seems like the orientation of the copy trim is not um, consistent relative to uh, the original and the um, and the kind of base, right? So that has to do with the UV space of um, this set of panels here and the surface that was created here. So if you wanted to, um, you could uh, swap the UV space or modify the UV space of the 
components, and it will then update the location of the trim on the um, on the quads. So to do that, you could do the analyze direction option from Rhino, choosing the surface here. Notice how red and green. Red is typically U, and green is V. So they're not really oriented in the same kind of direction as, uh, let's say, the X, Y. So we might try and swap the UVs first. All right, so now red is to the right. That's X. That's good. But my V, green, is down instead of up. So I could do V reverse. So now I have a consistent direction. Hit Enter. And now the UV uh, space is now coordinated between the component and the target quad, right? So here we have the upper left-hand corner, and there we now have the upper left-hand corner. That's a really great question. You have to coordinate the surface space, the parameter space of a component, as well as the quad that you're trying to copy your trim down to. All right, are there any other questions about this last exercise? Okay, so there was a, a question about um, access to the control points of a file of a Rhino surface in Grasshopper to start to manipulate them um, to manipulate the surface through Grasshopper options. And the answer is yes. So um, if I were to bake this um, original surface that we had. bring it over here. Just like we did in the very first file, any surface, uh, if we bring it into Grasshopper, set one surface, any surface uh, ha is made of control points. So if I turn the control points on in Rhino, there they are, right? Um, but I can also see those control points in Grasshopper. Remember on the first file we went to surface analysis surface points and from the surface we found the surface points. These are the point locations um, of those control points, right? So those correspond to the same points here and here, right? Um, and then the question was, can I start to manipulate th these? Yeah, of course. Um, we could say uh, find some way to manipulate them. Maybe every other one is moved in the Z direction one unit. Um, and, the, and the only thing that we w need to coordinate is if we wanted to reconstruct the surface is that we are um, using these points in the correct order in U and V to then recreate our surface. So that's a really good question. Um, and remember that goes back to the fundamentals that we started with at the very beginning of the webinar. Okay, so um, the question, another question was, um, I want to, uh, if I go back to my other file, the question was, let's say if we make it the simplest case, we go back to the original quads. The question was, I want to manufacture this, right? And to keep manufacturing costs down, one strategy might be to um, determine that there are only 10 types of uh, surface panels, right? So maybe this one, this one, this one are all the same. And then um, that's type one. And then type two is all these, and then type three, right? We could visualize um, how those might be grouped based on how, how much they're out of plane. But for the geometry to actually correspond to this exact same set of, uh, of cut profiles, that's a, a more complex challenge, right? Um, in that case, you'd have to be optimizing the panel so that they are consistent. If you think about it relative to tolerances, you might be able to more easily group them into um, uh, sets where they're um, more or less planar or more or less out of plane. To do something like that, all you'd have to do is basically 
um, take the absolute distance, right, which is the output here from um, our planarity test. And on the sets list tab, we could sift um, these uh, value, these quads onto, let's say we wanted to have five panel types, onto five uh, lists, right? So we'll drop in the sift object. This takes in the list to sift and the corresponding sift pan pattern, which needs integers. So if I wanted um, to have five types, I could in zoom in and increase the number of outputs, so zero to four. And all I'd have to do is remap these values uh, from what they are to zero to four, and then um, supply that to here. So let's go ahead and do that, because we have a couple of extra minutes since we started late um, to do something like that. So let's um, take the uh, surfaces, drop them onto the list. We'll take the absolute value distances and we'll remap them. This is under math domain. By first taking the bounds, understanding the minimum and maximum, and then remapping those values from uh, their existing uh, set of min and max to a new min and max, which might be between zero and four, right? So these are, that's my target uh, domain, zero to four. These are my absolute values. And this is my uh, set of outputs, right? So all these values will determine which list I'm on. So now I'd have the most planar, second most, third most, fourth most, and fifth most, right? So now I have, let's say, um, pairings in terms of knowing how much they are out of plane, right? And they're isolated into groups. So if you want to then start to rationalize it or optimize it for a certain number of cut profiles, this would be where you could start, where you could say, okay, the ones that are the most out of plane, I need to start to deal with in a certain way, et cetera, et cetera. And you could also use this to say, I want to apply five types of components to this collection of five um, quads by just repeating this exact same process over here. All right, so really good questions.